As mentioned, here's our detailed look at the Ethernet header right next to the high level look. We know the overall frame setup, header, data, trailer. There's a little more to it, and here are the fields in the header we need to be familiar with. The preamble, preamble to what? I don't know yet. Um, SFD, destination, source, and type. And actually, the preamble, the only thing you need to know about that, or even want to know about it right now, uh, is that it's there for synchronization purposes. The nuts and bolts of this field are way beyond the scope of the exam, so we are not going to go into the details here. Again, with that, if you want to look at it at Wikipedia, that's fantastic, but it is beyond the scope of the exam. Uh, the SFD, the Start Frame Delimiter, it indicates that the preamble has ended and the destination MAC address is on deck. That's really it. Now, those destination and source addresses, of course, are MAC addresses because we are at Ethernet, we're at Layer 2, and that's always going to be a MAC address. Now, the type field is technically the Ether type field, and that indicates the protocol type that's carried in the data field. And in today's networks, that's going to be very likely IP version 4 or IP version 6, but it can be plenty of other protocols, and again, there's a full list on that Wikipedia page for EtherType if you want to check that out. Now, here's something that we definitely uh, need to know about for our exam. The FCS. Well, it's kind of like the Ethernet caboose. You know, it's the only thing there at the end. And how important can it be if it's just hanging around at the end? Because you don't see many cabooses on the end of trains anymore, right? Well, this caboose is very important because here's what the FCS is for. It's a vital error detection tool. And it's a three-step process. The sender is going to run an algorithm against the contents of the frame. It takes the result of that algorithm and puts it in the FCS field. Now, I may have mentioned that elsewhere, but maybe not this term. The result is the checksum. Now, the receiver gets the data, gets the frame, runs the exact same algorithm against the exact same contents. And what do we expect to get? The exact same value in that checksum. So if the results are the same, everything is beautiful, life goes on, the frame is fine. If the results are not the same, then something happened to the frame contents as it went across the wire, and the frame is going to be discarded. I shouldn't say dump. That's, that's kind of a crude sounding way to put it, but it is dump. We get rid of it. One way or the other, we're getting rid of it. Now, what doesn't happen next, what doesn't happen is that the receiver does not tell the sender hey, you know, that frame was no good and I had to get rid of it. The FCS does not perform error correction. It performs error detection. Now, there's another cable that I want to introduce you to. We saw a couple of common network connections earlier. We saw PC to switch. We saw switch to switch. We saw switch to router. There's another one I want to introduce you now to now, and it's when you have to connect your PC or, more likely, your laptop directly to a switch or router in order to configure it or to troubleshoot it. And for that physical connection, you would need yet another type of cable. And when you physically connect your laptop to a Cisco router or switch, on the network device, what you're doing is connecting to the console port. It should say CON right next to it. And for this, you're going to need a console cable. There are eight wires inside a rollover cable, and the reason I'm suddenly calling it a rollover cable is that they each roll over to a different pin at the other end, 1 to 8, 2 to 7, 3 to 6, and so on. Now, what I want, I'll show you one in just a moment, and what you should hear when you snap that into place, I'm going to go back here for just a second, there we go, because one end of the console cable is going to have an RJ45 connector. And it's similar to that on the end of a landline phone wire. I believe that's an RJ11 connector. Uh, but, you know, you, you hear it snap. You're fumbling down there. If you've ever had those uh, really annoying phone jacks that are weighed out for at a bad angle and you're trying to reach around the bookcase to get it and you feel it snap in, you know you're good to go. Well, that's the kind of snap you're going to feel when you snap an RJ45 connector into place. Now, it's the other end of the console cable you need to be aware of. And let me bring up an image from Cisco's learning site. And this is the end you have to worry about because this is what it looks like. And if you've seen, or you probably have, of course, a straight-through cable or a crossover cable, that's just a nice little round cable with two RJ45 connectors, one at each end. Well, this cable is flat. You can see it from here. And also, notice this connector. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a DB9 connector, 
And the chances of your modern laptop having a DB9 port are very, very, very slim. Uh, if that is your situation, what you have to do is get an adapter for your cable. You know, you can find them online. Uh, they do not come in with the routers because, <clears throat> excuse me, what we used to fight about when new Cisco equipment would come in, you know, the admins would be there, you know, like, like sharks on top of chum. You know, they smell blood in the water. It's like, <laughs> I smell new switches in the building. I'm going to go get nine rollover cables because I might need all nine one day. When you have ten guys doing that and you only have five new switches, it can get pretty ugly. But you always should have a spare. I, like, I always like to keep one uh, in the glove compartment of my car. That way, no matter what gets forgotten or if I end up going somewhere quickly, uh, you know, I always have a rollover cable. Uh, and it's a very good thing to find out before you visit a client site that you might need an adapter of some kind. So it's definitely something you want to check out. Rollover cables are easy to spot, again, because they're almost totally flat and usually colored light blue easy to spot and that's exactly when you need one is when you're going to connect your your laptop directly to a router or switch to configure it and that's that for this particular section that's the end of the ethernet discussion i will see you in the next series of lectures see you there